Today I described in detail certain economic problems which everyone admits now face the nation. For the many messages which have come to me after that speech, and which it is physically impossible to answer individually, I take this means of saying thank you. Tonight, sitting at my desk in the White House, I make my first radio report to the people in my second term of office. I'm, I'm reminded of that evening in March, four years ago, when I made my first radio report to you. We were then in the midst of the great banking crisis. Soon after, with the authority of the Congress, we asked the nation to turn over all of its privately held gold, dollar for dollar, to the government of the United States. Today's recovery proves how right that policy was. But when almost two years later, it came before the Supreme Court, its constitutionality was upheld only by a five to four vote. The change of one vote would have thrown all the affairs of this great nation back into hopeless chaos. What is my proposal? It is simply this. Whenever a judge or justice of any federal court has reached the age of 70 and does not avail himself of the opportunity to retire on a pension, a new member shall be appointed by the president then in office with the approval, as required by the Constitution, of the Senate of the United States. That plan has two chief purposes. By bringing into the judicial system a steady and continuing stream of new and younger blood, I hope first to make the administration of all federal justice from the bottom to the top speedier and therefore less costly. Secondly, to bring to the decision of social and economic problems younger men who have had personal experience and contact with modern facts and circumstances under which average men have to live and work. This plan will save our national constitution from hardening of the judicial arteries. Those opposing this plan have sought to arouse prejudice and fear by crying that I am seeking to pack the Supreme Court and that a baneful precedent will be established. What do they mean by the words, packing the Supreme Court? Let me answer this question with a bluntness that will end all honest misunderstanding of my purposes. If by that phrase, packing the court, it is charged that I wish to place on the bench spineless puppets who would disregard the law and would decide specific cases as I wish them to be decided, I make this answer, that no president fit for his office would appoint, and no Senate of honorable men fit for their office would confirm that kind of appointees to the Supreme Court. But if by that phrase, the charge is made that I would appoint and the Senate would confirm Justices worthy to sit beside present members of the court who understand modern conditions, that I will appoint justices who will not undertake to override the judgment of the Congress on legislative policy, that I will appoint justices who will act as justices and not as legislators, if the appointment of such justices can be called packing the court, then I say that I, and with me the vast majority of the American people, favor doing just that thing now. During the last half century, the balance of power between the three great branches of the federal government has been tipped out of balance by the courts in direct contradiction of the high purposes of the framers of the Constitution. It is my purpose to restore that 
Stalin. You who know me will accept my solemn assurance that in a world in which democracy is under attack, I seek to make American democracy succeed. You and I will do our part. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the President of the United States speaking on his proposal for reorganization of the judicial branch of the federal government.